four, right? One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> oh, no! Did you just see what happened? Hello, you absolute legends. A lot of crazy things are happening in the world of Mario Kart 64 speedrunning. A lot of crazy, crazy things. It's not totally uncommon for new strategies or glitches to be discovered decades after a game's release, but in the case of Mario Kart 64, we've seen way more than you'd expect in a relatively short amount of time. Naturally, the new strategies that are discovered tend to be increasingly more complex as the years go by. This is only logical, as if strategies were simple, they would have a much higher likelihood of being found early. Sometimes, strategies become so complex and convoluted that it is impossible for the regular viewer to have any clue what is happening at any moment. This is the case with games like Zelda Ocarina of Time and Super Mario World, where gameplay looks like a jumbled mess, and then suddenly, the game is over. However, other times a newly discovered strategy may not necessarily be complex, but rather incredibly unlikely. Sometimes a technique can be so unlikely for someone to actually execute that it is considered for all intents and purposes impossible. Speedrunners have been known to lack faith in potentially viable strategies though, leading to a perfectly doable glitch being left in the dark for years before it was finally attempted seriously and successfully implemented. These types of highly improbable strategies are the realm of what speedrunners call individual level speedruns. If it takes an hour to run through an entire game, you can't waste your time trying to pull off a glitch that has a 1 in a thousand chance of happening. Not only would you need the glitch to work, but you would then need to follow it up with a clean run. Statistically, it's just not a good overall strategy. On the other hand, if you're running something short, like a single level or a single track, now you can really start to seriously consider strategies that seem utterly crazy. Speedrunners can, and will, spend hundreds of hours playing a single level that doesn't last longer than a minute. I would know, I've done it myself. This type of speedrunning is much more relaxed and less stressful than longer runs, which is why I personally prefer it. But this combination of highly repetitive gameplay with a relaxed mood leads to one of the rarest and most interesting ways a speedrunner can completely choke a new world record. And the most egregious example I have ever seen of this just happened in Mario Kart 64. A recently discovered exploit that has a 1 in 90,000 chance of being successful was just pulled off for the first time in history by the speedrunner Mr. Pitt. But the moment after completing this world first feat, he paused and quit the run to his utter dismay. Truly devastating. And in this video, we will discuss exactly why this happened. I hope you enjoy. Before we go on, this video is sponsored by NordVPN, and I'll quickly show you what I use NordVPN for. So the other day, I really wanted to watch The Terminator. But of course, when I searched for it on Netflix, it wasn't there. That didn't discourage me though. I just did a quick search to see which countries it was available in, changed my location through NordVPN, and bam, there it is in all its glory. Honestly, I end up saving money. NordVPN only costs a few dollars a month, and with all of the extra access I get to TV shows and movies, I don't need to buy 10 different streaming services. This one feature alone is more than worth the cost. But of course, I can still use NordVPN for all of the other things a VPN is useful for, like extra security, increased privacy, and accessing websites through different regions. Now here's the best part. You can get 68% off plus four months free by going to nordvpn.com slash carljobst or by clicking the link in the description. Individual level speedruns allow for the most precise world records ever performed. This doesn't make them more difficult per se, as the shorter a speedrun is, the less chance there is for mistakes to be made. But these shorter speedruns open the door to strategies that on the surface seem far too unlikely to ever realistically happen. One such example is the infamous Depot Warp on GoldenEye 007. By switching weapons at the perfect time and having exactly the right angle, it is barely possible to warp through a completely closed, locked door, giving direct access to the end of the stage, saving two seconds. This warp is so rare that it can take many hours to achieve a single time, and the level is only 20 seconds long, so you can fit a lot of attempts in those hours. This warp was discovered a full 10 years before it was legitimately used, but it was only ever performed with the Turbo Mode cheat, which allows Bond to move quicker than normal. People had tried to do it in a real run, but they just couldn't seem to manage it. Eventually, it was deemed impossible, until 2015, where it was fluked by the runner Scorpion. Once it was done for the first time, the floodgates were opened, and since then, almost 100 people have used the warp to score a new personal best. 
This type of strategy literally involves banging your head against a wall hundreds of times in the hope that something magical happens. And it is this type of strategy that also leads to one of the rarest types of speedrunning chokes that you can ever see. Muscle memory is a powerful drug, and if you are not careful, you may wind up successfully pulling off a crazy technique only to immediately do what you've done every single run for the past 10 hours. Pause and quit out to try again. Oh my god, I did it again! I, I did it again, dude. When you have failed a trick a thousand times before, and each time you fail you instantly quit and retry the stage, this produces a very dangerous habit. It gets to the point where each quit out is no longer a conscious decision, but rather an instinct that has been cultivated over time. It has happened to me, and it has happened to many runners that grind these types of techniques. In order to avoid this happening, speedrunners should always delay their quit outs for at least a full second after each failed attempt. This will give them enough time to react on the off chance the strategy actually works. Now let's take a look at this new Mario Kart 64 strategy that was found for the track Kalimari Desert. The main feature of this level is a train line that splits the level in two. The line is fenced off, creating a barrier, so you need to find the two gapped sections in order to get through. The fence can be jumped though, and the world record makes use of a slight bump in the terrain in order to leap over the entire track. Realistically though, this jump doesn't save all that much time. The world record without jumping the fence is 2 minutes and 3 seconds, and the world record using the jump is 2 minutes and 1 second. The problem is that it's hard to get heights unless you take advantage of very specific terrain. The standard hop that can be performed is very low and can't provide enough height on its own to jump the fence. The terrain inside the track is flat, so you can't jump over the fence from within. The only real way you would be able to find a substantial skip is by going through the fence itself. Going through barriers is not uncommon in speedrunning, and most of us will be familiar with the skips used in Super Mario 64. In that case, speedrunners build up enough speed so that Mario is in front of the door on one frame and completely beyond the door on the next frame. This is easy to do in a lot of games if there is some exploit that you can use to build up incredible speeds. But in Mario Kart 64, such an exploit doesn't exist. The only way to get more speed is by executing a mini turbo or by using a mushroom, but even then, it's not an insane amount of speed, certainly not enough to fly through solid objects. But as it turns out, there is a way to get through the fence. While you can't completely clear it, if you land perfectly inside it, you can still make it through to the other side. And when I say land perfectly inside it, I really do mean perfectly. The precision required is so high that the odds of successfully positioning your cart in the correct location is approximately 1 in 90,000. Technically, it's not luck, but when values need to be this precise, it effectively becomes random, as humans cannot control the game to that level of precision. This new exploit was discovered last month by the speedrunner Forest64, who also created this tool-assisted speedrun demonstrating the glitch. In practice, the strategy involves pointing your cart at the fence, using a mushroom to quickly gain speed, and then hoping for the best. Now, let's do some quick math. Assuming each attempt takes a conservative 30 seconds, if you multiply that by 90,000, it comes out to 750 hours. Obviously, someone could get lucky and get it earlier, but they could also get unlucky as well. Either way, grinding for this would be a monstrous commitment. However, as it turns out, someone did get lucky. On the 8th of November, the speedrunner Mr. Pitt did this. I'm including to do 3-3. Three, three. If I went by 3-3 three, three odds, oh god, no. I w someone would not get this by the time their life is done, unless they got super fucking lucky. Like, the chance of that happening would be actually insane. 
But hell, I'll take shortcut record any day. For flat, I'm fine with this. Four, right? One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> oh! No! No! Clip that! Clip that! Fucking clip that! Fucking clip that! Fucking clip that! Statistically, this shouldn't have happened this quickly, and evidently, Mr. Pitt wasn't really ready for it. Some may ask, why didn't he simply unpause and keep going? Well, the problem is that in these types of speedruns, you aren't allowed to pause at any time, so the moment he paused, the run was completely void. If he didn't pause, this would have instantly been a new world record for the fastest ever lap on this track, by several seconds. If performed well, this new skip would save anywhere between 5 to 10 seconds on a single lap. Obviously, if you wanted to keep going and get the 3 lap world record, it would require a clean run, but I'm sure the best Mario Kart players would be able to handle it with such a massive lead. Now thankfully, progress is being made on finding an improved setup for this trick to increase the likelihood of pulling it off. The speedrunner Abney has suggested that he may be able to get it down to around a 1 in 15,000 chance. That's still extremely low though. To put it into context, a triple weather tanko skip has a likelihood of around 1 in a thousand. People will continue to try to get this new skip to work, but as of yet, no one has been able to replicate it. This kind of strategy opens the door to a very interesting future though. It's almost certain someone is going to do it again at least once to break the current record. But then you have to wonder, will someone ever be able to do it twice in the same run? Or dare I even suggest it, three times. Only time will tell. As always, thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.